Welcome back to the uh, uh, today class. We will today we will talk about 2D imaging and some of the this transformation related uh, also applications. And uh, the lab class actually lab video will be available uh, uh, in this week. I think that the T already mentioned that they already made it and probably I guess they already the uh, release it at the KLMS. I guess uh, that lab video is related to the how to uh, compile and link also the how to understand the OpenGL. And then uh, watching that uh, uh, live video should be useful for you to conduct uh, this uh, program assignment. Okay. Also, I went over the, your question. Actually, the, here I uh, the, uh, brought two questions. One of your fellow students actually mentioned that he was or, or he, or, he or she was already confused about OpenGL with the real coordinates. So actually, the, he mentioned that in the, at the example of Julia said. We can just draw the everything uh, uh, on the window, I guess, without using the concept of the, the world coordinate. Uh, I think that the he or she is uh, uh, correct. We can do that without introducing the concept of world, uh, world coordinate. But actually, the, I uh, uh, intentionally the introduced the concept of world, since a lot of, K, a lot of the, the many of these computer graphics applications, we definitely had uh, this concept of world coordinate. For example, suppose that uh, if you want to draw the, this kind of the, you know, the, the blackboard or the, this kind of desk, obviously those objects actually have a, the, have a particular this, the world, uh, the location in, in, our, uh, in our facility world. Right? So that's why it's very clear that uh, in uh, a lot of cases we need to use the, we have to use the concept of world coordinate. So that's why actually I uh, intentionally introduced the world coordinate concept of the, this uh, Julia set. So basically, based on that example, we will extend the, we will actually the, uh, develop the, our this, the computer graphics related concept uh, from there. Also, the, uh, another, your fellow student mentioned that is there any limit of the zooming in? We actually, uh, so basically, the, I showed in the Julia case, we actually showed the zooming in, zoom out, uh, zoom out, zooming out function, right? So the, uh, obviously, the, uh, if we keep zooming in, actually, there are, for example, when we actually have a certain image, right? Uh, say you, you might have the, the 1,000 by 1,000 pixel in your uh, image, and then if you keep zooming in, obviously, in some cases, you might see the very big uh, pixel on your screen, right? So that image may be very blocky or very blurry, right? So obviously, the, you can keep zooming in, but the, your original image or some or, or your content should be able to provide additional information, right? But you know, in, uh, in most of cases, actually, there are uh, some of the this limited resolution, uh, limited information. That's why when you keep zooming in, you might get a very, very uh, blocky or blurry example. But actually, along that line, in the case of the image, there's a uh, there's technique known as the super resolution. Actually, some of you may heard about the super resolution. For example, in this image, actually, this image is very uh, has a, a, a kind of low resolution. So if we visualize this image here. It's kind of the blurry. I guess you can see that it's kind of you can see this blurry one, right? But actually, the, due to the thanks to the uh, development of the recent deep learning, we can actually the increase even resolution beyond the original resolution. So actually, uh, here we can uh, if we apply some of the deep learning based or the, some other uh, the uh, uh, super resolution technique, we can actually improve even the original the resolution. You can increase the original. Uh, uh, original resolution while maintaining very sharp uh, uh, while maintaining the sharp features. You can see that it looks a little bit better than the uh, this uh, prior one. So if you're interested about this one, you can actually the, you can search along the uh, this super resolution. I'm not actually the, I'm not giving you the, the exact answer to the to this question, but I'm just giving you some of the related direction or some of hint about that. So I rec I encourage you to if you're interested uh, if you're interested uh, getting know the, the, the better about this understanding this the question I recommend you to study more and explore more along uh, by looking at uh, the, by uh, by searching some of relevant uh, uh, information about this so along that line I actually showing this one example okay let's get back to our the lecture material today. So at the end of this class, I wish that you can, you can write down to a simple 2D transformation matrix. And then also there, here we will introduce this homogeneous coordinate. And then you will see that some of the exam, uh, benefit of using this homogeneous coordinate. And then we will, uh, we will actually talk about some of OpenGL, related, uh, OpenGL transformation related API. And we will talk about eigenbase animation method. And some of these topics actually are already covered in, uh, in uh, at the section chapter of the 3.2 in my book and also there, as a reminder last time we talked about the open structure 
with the event-based program, you might remember that when you click the mouse or some button, we actually, the, we, only, we actually set up the callback function. And at that case, callback function actually is the call, right? So to address, to respond to the, uh, that kind of user interaction. And also we ran over the sum of calls of the trolling assignment one, Julia said. And uh, also the, uh, we already talked about the, the, the whole uh, spec. Uh, I think that the spec of PA1 already available at the KLMS homepage. I recommend you to look at those then. Okay, so let's talk about some of geometric transformation. You may know that already know that this geometric transformation. In this case, we just dedicate our the, uh, our limit our discussion on two D case. So this geometric transformation is nothing but some of function that map point from one place to the another one, something like that, right? And this geometric transformation can be applied to any kind of drawing primitive, like the point or the lines of the sum of the uh, uh, sum of triangle or conics. Also, some of you actually asked why we actually mainly use the triangle for this, uh, this 3D the application. We can use the many other uh, many other representations, but there actually it turns out that triangles actually the uh, one of very simple representation that can uh, they can actually represent very complicated uh, this 3D model. So uh, because we are using a lot of, of the, uh, using a lot on the this 3D uh, uh, triangle for the 3D application, I'll actually then talk about this, uh, this issue later on more. And also, we can also apply the, this uh, geometric transformation to the, this kind of the image. I'd like to show you some of the demo here. Let me see. Uh, Okay, it works now. So basically, it's just uh, this application, nothing but we are just showing the uh, this image, right? And then we can apply the in this the little this the, uh, uh, one, we can actually put down some of the number, right? And then we can do the some rotation. If I do the, if I actually the, oh, oh sorry, again, and if I actually increase the rotation value, you can see we, we rotate it. If you, if you can scale along the X, you can, I hope you can see that. I, I can just type there, let's say, two. You can see that, right? You can, you can do the, the you can just provide this kind of transformation. Um, the very simple, this the geometric transformation demo. And then this actually code already available at the, uh, uh, this available, uh, uh, already available at the, this course homepage. If you Google, uh, if you actually go to the, our course homepage, those actually the, some of the demos are a little available. And let's see the, how we can do that. Uh, so for example, translation, to the translation. So given this the starting the coordinate x and y, we're just adding some of translation amount. Let's say tx and ty. And then this the, uh, translated coordinate, we say that is x prime, y prime. We can actually have this kind of the relationship, right? Also, we can represent them in a diskymmetric form. And then, uh, given that this 2D translation, we can define the inverse function or, or also this identity one, right? Mm -hmm. Inverse is that uh, if we apply this one, we just undo the, this prior translation. In this case, we can actually set up the function like this. And identity is nothing but leaves every point unchanged, right? So in, at the 2D translation, if we just apply the 0, 0 translation along the x and y, uh, everything uh, does not change, right? The, at, the, at the case, this is the identity transformation. Translation. Also, the same thing applies for the 2D, uh, 2D rotation. You might, I guess you might uh, already know very well about this topic. Uh, the uh, 2D rotation, right? Basically, it's uh, rotating along uh, about the, this origin in this coordinate, and then this co rotation matrix, cosine theta and cosine theta here, sine theta minus sine, and sine, something like that. And this is inverse, inverse of this rotation. And this is actually identity rotation matrix. You might remember that it's actually the, uh, if we put the zero here, this turns out to be zero, uh, one, zero, zero, one, something like that, right? The two the rotation. And then uh, sometimes we want to rotate object 30 degree and then six degree, right? And then we can actually have this kind of the, we rotate it, we actually have a one to the rotation with the 30 degree. 
And another uh, rotation, the follow, following on this rotation with the D6 degree, you can actually have you can actually have this uh, one matrix, the other matrix, right? And then also you can merge these two two matrix together, right? And it, uh, essentially they are 90 degree rotation, right? So that we can actually there have a, this kind of rotation. So we can also mathematically prove that these are actually equivalent to each other. <clears throat> and also we can define that this Euclidean group is nothing but a, a set of the translation with the rotation. Uh, again, actually this is a commonly used for the uh, uh, representing rigid body transform. For example, rigid body is kind of the uh, uh, metal-like one. So when you are doing the, this kind of rigid body transform, uh, basically nothing does not, I mean the nothing uh, do not deform. So everything maintains its shape. So it, uh, as a result, it creates a distance, angle, something like that. And one of simple uh, the form of the representing this one is something like this. If sign from x and y, we do the rotation, and then we adding the this translation, right? This is actually one representation. But actually, there uh, we are not using this. Uh, we are not we are we are not using this form a lot, mainly because it has certain problems. So, for example, when you actually when you need to perform a series of rotation or translation to object. Uh, in the world space, actually, then you can uh, uh, sometimes actually the, we have to maintain basically the, this translation rotation. Actually, they are separate in this form, right? So actually, the, to do that, we need to maintain the, this the amount of the translation rotation. If you do that, another translation rotation, we need to separate. We need to actually maintain another trans, a set of the translation rotation. We have to keep doing that, right? But if you look at the, this 3D, if you look at the, some of the 3D games, there should be a lot of rotation translation, right? Then, if we need to perform a lot of a set of a lot of the translation rotation, then we have to maintain we have to record the, this the, the, those pair of translation rotation a lot of times, which can be a lot of the uh, uh, which may require a lot of uh, memory space. For, uh, basically, there sometimes we need to do the, a lot of this series of rotation, also series of rotation translation. So it will be better if we can combine these two different ones into one. Then obviously, there we just need to maintain only one. This is actually memory space uh, benefit. Also, they're performing this uh, uh, matrix multiplication two times. Uh, compared to that, just they're performing uh, one matrix multiplication, this is actually much better, right? So, uh, in addition to the memory, the benefit, also this computationally, the better, right? So, that's why somehow, if we, can, uh, if we can actually the, if we can combine them into the one matrix representation, it should be the very good. Also, the uh, 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 problem with this, this one uh, other issue is that. Uh, basically, sometimes we also need to do inverse transform. Then it also require a lot of multiple steps, right? If we actually have only one matrix form, it will be the this after it can solve this uh, this issue. How can you do that actually? So the main main issue is translation. The amount of translation was out of the dislocation part. How we can we combine? How we can merge them together? Along that line, actually, we can inter we introduce this homogeneous coordinate. So suppose. So basically, the, we are talking about 2D, but actually we extended this 2D into this kind of 3D, where uh, basically the, our 2D, we put the, this our 2D plane as a soft space with, uh, in, in this 3D coordinate. And then we actually the, consider this particular plane a soft space that does not contain the origin, especially for the simplicity of our uh, explanation. We just assume that our 2D space lies on the 3D plane, uh, the, basically G is equal to 1. So basically here actually we, we treat that this, we embed this one into three space where the g is equal to one. And this is actually nothing but homogeneous coordinate. And then we just consider homogeneous coordinate that having that after one. And then now we can actually the, uh, we can actually the trans we can actually re represent this form into the something like this. You can say that starting from the x and y and one, so now actually we have three coordinate, right? This homogeneous coordinate, and then we apply the this is a rotation part, and this is actually trans, a translation part. You can see that uh, we can apply the this uh, cosine x minus sine y, and this is one, and basically plus p x, right? Basically, the, we can actually apply the this. The, we, we we combine this translation with the rotation here, and same thing here. And then also you can see further this last coordinate zero, uh, zero, zero, one, and then for the direction we can. Uh, even after this rotation, we can maintain x prime, y prime, also there, we can maintain this the one in the homogeneous coordinate. So, so now we combine this translation and rotation together within a single, re a represent single matrix form, and then 
uh, as you can see, uh, when we actually had a series of the, this kind of uh, rotation translation a lot, then we can still make, we can just, we can just still use the one single rotate, uh, one single the matrix uh, uh, form here. Also, we can, we can actually do this. We can also compute the inverse function of this very easily. That's the main benefit of using homogeneous coordinate. There could be many other uh, the, uh, tra uh, transform. This is scaling. You can see that this two D case is, we can just using the scale one. Here I'm just showing that this matrix matrix representation, and then uh, uh, in the in the three D case uh, with the homogeneous homogeneous case, we can see that this x this scaling factor s s and zero zero. You can cancel that here. You can uh, basically they just spend just a few minutes. But you can see that actually there by applying the matrix and this vector form, you can get this. Uh, you can actually you can see that the homogeneous coordinate uh, even after this one. One and this also realized the scaling uh, uh, scaling operation, and then uh, before we talked about the, this the mapping from the world space to NDC. Here I just overlay the, this world space of, uh, uh, on top of the NDC space. Here the blue the blue is just background, and then uh, this WT W the, the bottom top left and right in terms of the world coordinate and NDC is starting from minus one to one. Uh, uh, this is the minus one to one and minus one to one, right? In that case, actually, we derive this kind of equation, right? So nothing but starting from the world coordinate, apply the a plus b, and we get the new coordinate in there and this space, right? Then, then this is nothing but uh, that uh, we can we, we do the this trans transformation by uh, by uh, by multiplication and then uh, uh, with addition, right? And then we can represent that in the this kind of the we are in, uh, in, uh, in a single this matrix form. We can see that this actually the uh, this uh, multiplication part. Uh, by doing that, we multiply this factor with uh, this third one, and this cancel, and then we actually adding this one, right? And then this third third wall, we actually set the zero zero one, then then the the homogeneous coordinate turns to the one, right? <coughs> Overall, actually, there now it can be done. It can be represented in actually the, uh, this matrix, uh, one single matrix multiplication, which is concept, uh, conceptually simple. Also, the, we can also the, uh, <coughs> maintain all the benefit of the using this the one single uh, uh, this matrix multiplication. Sharing. Sharing is not something like this. Actually, we, we push things in, in a side way, something like that. So basically, you can see that uh, uh, if we actually x and y coordinate, then this one is that <coughs> x prime, y prime is that. X prime, x prime is oh, okay here. I can use the 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 shear coordinate x prime is turned out to be the one one x plus and one y something like that. Right? So basically that's why the x coordinate actually the uh, 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 basically you can see we can have this kind of shape as we uh, as we have more y coordinate it actually the it is that shift more right. That's why we get this kind of shape. This is a shearing operation. It's uh, another shearing operation along the y axis. Sometimes we can use it. Uh, I'm just showing that we can represent the we can represent this kind of shearing operation with uh, this matrix representation in the 2D. Or obviously, we can represent it into 3D with homogeneous coordinates. Reflection, right? Uh, uh, re uh, reflect along the, this x uh, x axis. Then you can see that the y coordinate flips. That's why actually we got the, this uh, <coughs> uh, for the this y uh, uh, the second row turns to the zero and minus one, right? Another uh, it's a reflection about the y axis. I'm just there actually there. Uh, you can see that uh, I'm uh, I actually I'm actually there going over this stuff in a, a reasonably fast way. Mainly because that uh, I think that there you can very uh, uh, I mean the, uh, basically uh, you already covered this one uh, maybe in the high school. Also there I don't want to talk about there a lot in the low level uh, this low level details in in in, our, in, our, uh, in this online the video. Since if I do that, it may be, it may make you very, uh, uh, I may uh, I may make you very bored, right? So that's why I would like to maintain a, a reasonably uh, reasonably fast mode. And uh, again, uh, let's get back to the this uh, now the uh, this composition of the two D transformation. I will talk about this one, uh, but let's uh, revisit this issue. So sometimes actually the uh, we want to so here starting from the V one. We want to actually apply the this the, uh, s s let's say s could be the scaling that uh, uh, scaling scaling and then we uh, we get uh, this v two uh, vertex and then we do the rotation again 
the strength from the V2, we rotate and then we get the V3, right? Sometimes, you know, uh, in many of the these computer graphics applications, we, uh, we do the, a lot of this, a series of roots, a series of the, this kind of the roots, uh, transformation. We will see that we do the, a lot for the, even for the, this, uh, this rendering pipeline. That's why actually we talk about this transformation. And then, you can see that uh, V3, we can actually, we can compute the V3, starting from V1, we apply the, this S matrix and also the R, uh, R matrix, right? And then, uh, by following the, this one, you can, we first apply the, this S to the, on top of S uh, V1, and then we got the new vector, and then we uh, apply the, this R matrix, right? Or we can also the group the, this RS, and then we actually combine this RS matrix into one, and then apply the single matrix into V1, right? We can, this could be possible, right? Uh, the main reason is that actually the, for matrix multiplication, the matrix multi multiplication has this also, uh, associative to the, the property, right? So we can actually the group that way, also group that way, right? Intuitively, uh, based uh, here, starting from here, we do the scaling, and then we do the rotation, right? And then uh, we also do the, uh, we can actually combine them together, and then we can do the uh, one, uh, we, can, we can get the one multiplication, and then we can get the same effect. And, but, uh, uh, most of you know that actually the order of transformation is very important, right? We want to do the scale rotation, but rotation and scale is not, uh, uh, if we do the, the other way, obviously we, we may not get the exact same results, right? Although it's very important. And overall, so we, we'd like to now the generalize a little bit more. So the, now I'd like to talk about affine transformation. Affine transformation has the form of this one. So far I talked about the different, different transformation, but actually the, uh, uh, most of them, but all of them can be represented by this affine transformation. Here we start from x, y, and 1. But this, the mat, uh, in this case, the matrix has a form of the, we can have some, some values uh, uh, at the first row and second row, but we got the, this 0, 0, 1. So that actually we can maintain the homogeneous coordinate even after applying this affine transformation. So this affine transformation, nothing but this combination of translation, the translation part, rotation, and scale, and reflection, uh, the shearing usually happens in this here, right? So, so basically, the ba uh, uh, based on this third form, we can represent this one. And the, uh, there are some property of affine transformation. You can maintain the uh, parallel line uh, after uh, different after this third. Basically, the, if we actually had the parallel line in this third original space and applying the affine transformation, those parallel lines still maintain even after the affine transformation. And final point maps the final point. Now, sometimes actually, there uh, basically, uh, 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 depending on some of the arbitrary case, uh, some of the finite point here can be mapped to some infinite point, right? But the affine, uh, at the case of affine transformation, we don't have that kind of one. Finite points always map to finite points. Uh, so far, I talked about the, some of the, uh, this, uh, 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 this 2D transform, uh, uh, transformation. Uh, we talked about this the, uh, homogeneous coordinates so that we can combine this the translation, uh, also rotation. And then I talked about the, some other uh, transformation, then we can actually represent them in the, this kind of the, uh, affine transformations uh, with a still homogeneous coordinate. That's the main message up to here. Now let's talk about how we can, uh, uh, one can, you can actually, uh, you, can, you can implement the, this the transformation by yourself, but a little OpenGL provides some of the, this the, uh, function, OpenGL the function, right? So for example, uh, OpenGL provides this uh, rigid body transformation, you can call the GL translate with the amount of TX, PY, TG. Actually, here we are talking about the 3D transform translation. Uh, but you can uh, based on by putting the zero here TG, you can actually you can also implement the 2D transformation. Rotation, GL rotate. Then you're actually showing the angle in degree and along the this, uh, rotation, this angle uh, axis uh, basically the you can provide some of this the rotation uh, rotation axis. Also, the scale, the GL scale. So it looks like they don't use the actual rotation. The, looks like they don't use the, this the matrix representation, but the uh, matrix, the OpenGL actually use the matrix format internally. So basically, the, uh, uh, they believe that actually using this kind of the TX, QI, TG input to the GL translate is more intuitive to the user, right? But at, 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 as we talked about before, all those uh, trans trans transformation actually conducted in the matrix form, uh, that they should be done in, in, uh, 
Uh, this actually, if we do that, actually did that, uh, we can do the, we can simplify a lot of things, right? So that's why under the hood of OpenGL, we are using the matrix representation. But the, uh, in some of the OpenGL have just provide a very simple the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, interface to the user. So uh, many because some some of people they don't uh, they don't they may not know the, even the concept of matrix, right? So that's why actually they have this kind of very simple the API API uh, uh, input input the, the format. But internally they use the, actually the matrix one. But some of the actually recent the OpenGL also the uh, we can use the some of the library GLM. Then uh, we can also very we can represent the different kinds of the. Uh, the matrix or some matrix and uh, also there we can actually manipulate matrix and then we can provide those kind of matrix directly to OpenGL. Now as I talk about this, uh, this OpenGL example, it's a very simple animation. The, the, we are here actually by clicking left button, we are rotating the, uh, this uh, rectangle and then if I click the uh, right mouse button, it will stop. I will show you the, this demo here. This is the animation demo, and if I click the, this one, okay, uh, I actually have this uh, this one, the uh, rectangle shape. If I click the left button, it's rotate, right? It's so fast, so that uh, uh, and then if I click the right but right mouse button, it just stops left, right, something like that. Very simple animation, right? How can you do that? So in the main function of the here, the main function of that demo, we actually have this one. So basically, the uh, initially we also the gel clear, gel clear with this color buffer bit. So that they, we already have some sort of default color uh, value. I guess in this case, bullet back, you can. Uh, I guess in this case, default color color this initialized value should be the black one zero zero zero. Uh, uh, by looking at the, the black screen, black background uh, of that application, uh, we initialize the basically we initialize the, the color buffer with the, this black one, and then here we actually we have a gel push matrix and G, uh, gel pop matrix. By looking at the push and pop, there should be some sort of stack, but that stack is related to this matrix matrix, and then uh, here we do the this gel uh, we call the this gel rotate with the spin. Uh, this should be the rotation angle along the x, y, g axis. Here, the x and y is uh, zero, and g axis is one. So basically, the uh, you can just assume that the g axis is actually heading toward you. This is actually g axis. This g axis. You can say that this x and y and g. So you can by looking at by performing this one is that by looking at this one, and here g rotate is nothing but rotating, uh, rotating along the g axis. Uh, uh, as an amount of the spin, so actually the, what the, uh, the rectangle rotate at their way as an amount of the spin. And then here, now, we draw the GL color, uh, one RGB, so that's why RGB, is, uh, uh, RGB has the value of one, so it should be the white one. And then now we, are, we, we draw the, this GL rectangular shape. Uh, uh, this actually, the, uh, <coughs> I don't, I, I don't remember exactly the, I don't remember this the in, input parameter here, it's nothing but uh, just drawing the, this the, uh, rectangular shape, uh, this should be the, this may be the initial point or the, uh, let's, uh, the, the, let's look at the, this the, uh, the uh, input parameter. So if we do the, uh, if we do the, this the uh, Google link GL rec, I guess, there was the GL rec, right? Here, left PF, and uh, it's a. Uh, it, I, I don't remember a lot of API functions, but uh, if we do this one, GL rec, this specification, right? And then initial two value, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, x1, y1 specify one vertex of rectangle, x2, y2 specify opposite vertex of rectangle, something like that, right? And uh, based on this, uh, I guess. This is the uh, first vertex and the other vertex, right? Then along the this, this coordinate, and this one should be here, or the one should be there, there right? Given that these two vertex, we can draw the rectangle, right? So under the hood of the GL rack, we define this, I guess, they draw the, this, the, 
uh, they compute the forward text and draw the, this the rectangular shape. Then, and uh, basically, the, here you can see that uh, this where I talked about the open the state function, right? When you when actually, the, when you call this one, uh, when you define this vertex here and there, then we apply the, this GI color here. So, so those, the, the rectangle should have this, co this color value. And also, the, uh, we also rotate that, that vertex with this metric here. I mentioned that even though uh, here, GI rotate app, we, all, we probably compute some of the matrix representation, let's say this M MR, the, the, uh, the uh, rotation matrix that we actually created here. And then once we create, once we, let's say this here, we create certain vertex, right? And then when you visualize it, we, uh, we perform the, we compute the rotation. We need to compute the new rotated, uh, new coordinate value by applying the rotation matrix to the, this V. So uh, you, need to, you need to interpret this code uh, that performing that uh, operation actually. So here, uh, in this case, we, we have push metric here, right? And then at that case, the push matrix, uh, nothing here, right? So probably suppose that at the initial, uh, at the actually the beginning of this function, there, uh, there are some of the, uh, there should be some initial matrix related to, uh, related to, the, to this transformation, right? And let's say this MI, initial matrix, then we actually, by performing this, this gel push, Matrix, we put the, the, cur the uh, current matrix into the, some of the stack of the matrix, right? So we put the MI here, and then uh, we actually the use the, since this is uh, an uh, open state machine, by performing this one, we might use the, this MI, uh, and then when you uh, when encounter this new vertex, we actually performing this MI to the vertex, right? But we don't want to have any side effect once we get out of this function, right? So we want to initialize this, uh, this uh, current matrix, right? So that actually we perform a GL pop matrix. It indicates that we actually pop this MI and then we set the, this current matrix as MI. So basically there, uh, there should be some of state variable known as current matrix. Current matrix and whatever we encounter new vertex, we apply this current matrix to there. That's the main, uh, uh, what we are doing here. We need the GL push matrix and GL pop matrix. Uh, we are, by performing GL pop matrix, we actually get the, we, uh, we get back to the, the original initial matrix here. And then we perform the GL UT swap buffer. Uh, here, I will talk about this actually. This is swap buffer related to this uh, frame buffer. I think it's time to talk about the frame buffer more here. Uh, the frame buffer is nothing but uh, depth buffer and color buffer. So basically, the, we say that uh, every image that we draw is nothing but just frame. One frame, two frames, something like that. And then frame buffer is a sum of buffer containing the color depth. It can be the color and depth buffer. Uh, we actually talk about this buffer initialization. So here, uh, we can all uh, the uh, buffer initialization function is GL clear with, the G, with the, the G, GL uh, color buffer bit. Also, you can set up this clear color with the GL clear color. You can you set up the, this clear color, and then when you call this GL clear, we you actually we initialize this color buffer with the, this uh, predefined this uh, uh, clear color. And before we initialize, we need to create buffer, right? Then at that case, we need to create the GL UT in display mode. And then now, at the at the case of the Julia set, we use the single buffer. Now we are using the GL UT double double buffer. It means that we're actually using two color buffer. One color buffer and another color buffer. And then, uh, uh, basically, there, but there, even though we have two color buffer, so far that we only have one monitor here, right? One monitor. Then we can, we can see only one color buffer, right? So, so far that at that time, we only, the, we actually, the, we, we actually the link this, the, uh, this uh, the, we, we actually show that this contents of this color buffer is there, right? And then, uh, uh, at the case, uh, when we are using the, this double color buffer, when you are drawing something here, we don't draw the, this vertex not here. We draw the, a lot, uh, all the contents here, actually. We draw the rectangular shape, something like that, right? And then, uh, then since actually we draw something here, we are not showing the contents of this the buffer there, right? I mean, this monitor actually only accessing this, this buffer, and then they can this monitor visualizes content here, right? Then, once we are done, we, once we actually draw everything in this buffer, then we swap the buffer. We swap the buffer, it means that 
Now we let the monitor say that now from now on you actually you access this color buffer. You actually you access this color buffer and then visualize content here. So now we can see this one. And then this then what we are doing here. And then next time when you call the this display, we actually there uh, we draw the content here. We actually draw the rectangle and whatever, right? Then we might have this kind of content, right? So then and then we keep doing that, right? And then we uh, what's the main benefit of the using this the double buffer over the using single buffer? You may remember that the case of Julia said we only use single buffer. So when you we get we actually we, we draw a lot of content, you, you see the actually the we see the drawing process, right? But here we are we are not showing the, our drawing process, right? Once we are done on the, the finalizing on the, the drawing the process, we then we swap it, right? So uh, every time when you show something to the monitor project here, we always using uh, uh, we always showing the final uh, we always show this finalized the, the rendering result. So that actually we don't see the this drawing process. So when I actually the replay the, this demo here. It's actually very fast, but there, you, know, you can see that we are rotating that one, right? So we are not showing the actually the uh, at least we are not showing the, the drawing process. That's the main uh, difference between the uh, the Julia said with this example, and the main reason why we are using the this double buffer is that we are, uh, we are not showing the this drawing process. So we always show the this we finalize the, the the rendering result and then we show it. That's the main reason why we are using actually the double buffer. Uh, we created this double buffer with RGB, RGB channel, and we, we swap the buffer. So that actually, the, by swapping it, actually, always we are showing this content to the monitor, and then when you are drawing something, we use another buffer. And then we keep swapping. That's the, that way we, we hide the, this, the, the drawing process. I talked about the matrix tab. Uh, again, OpenJ maintain matrix stack, and then we it provide pop and push operation. Also, sometimes it's convenient for the transformation map operation. We we'll see that in my case, it, it, it actually simplifies a lot. And also, the data GL matrix mode. So the, uh, you might see that the GL matrix mode, but we don't see the GL matrix mode here. Uh, so basically, GL matrix mode set the current stack match, uh, the, this current stack actually. It comes with GL model view. Projection and texture. We'll get back to like we we'll actually we'll talk about this issue later on. But there uh, probably here the our the initial the, our current uh, the metric model should be the model view. Uh, model view is actually related to this the modeling and this transformation. And then uh, at once we set the metric model is chosen, then GL push and pop metrics is actually used to manipulate that stack. That stack actually. So. So you can see that at the case actually we don't we don't see that this the uh, matrix mode right that's the that's issue of OpenGL so here uh, unless you actually call the uh, in this case you never know what's the current matrix mode right so it's better to define the this the, uh, at the beginning of the function it's better to define the current matrix mode then it's very clear that uh, all those of matrix operations actually relate to that matrix mode or sometimes actually this is state mo a mode. Probably the matrix mode defined in some other function, so that we can see that uh, we can we can clearly we can explicitly see that this the state uh, uh, here actually while it's already defined somewhere. Uh, there could be many the open gel matrix operation, gel translate, gel rotate, gel multi matrix. Uh, just uh, basically the by doing the we have a proper matrix multiplication to the current matrix. These are actually the bit of the some these uh, when you call this one. We we actually concatenate the, the matrix that are created by this operation with the current matrix. OpenGL maintain current matrix whenever you do that. So for it actually, the, when you call this one, before we calling that function, uh, if we do the if we do the matrix initial matrix something like that, and then suppose so that this created some matrix T, then we actually applying the this T to the uh, the initial matrix here. Then whenever you uh, whatever vertex you are cre uh, you are creating here, you are applying the this uh, this edge matrix. Obviously, the here we can actually watch them into the uh, new one, something like that. Then we actually have this one. Obviously, the uh, uh, this should be the uh, faster than just of uh, uh, performing these two separate matrix process multiplication. And also, we can over overwrite the current matrix by calling this one GL load matrix, also the GL load identity. 
and GL load matrix has come to be the sum of the actually the matrix buffer here. Let's talk about here. <laughs> this actually now I'm going to talk about matrix specification in OpenGL. Uh, OpenGL actually using the column major order. It means that when you actually creating this the array of 16, uh, 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 array sum of the array with 16 elements, then basically the real web OpenGL interpret that the matrix in that way. M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5, something like that. This is actually column major. But depending on your library, sometimes actually some of library use the row major. It means that they interpret the value M1, M2, M3, M4, and 5, something like that. So this is just convention, right? So uh, this column major kind of refers to the typical C convention, right? So you should be very careful when you are you when you are actually the uh, <clears throat> when you actually uh, uh, transforming some matrix from the C to the this OpenGL. So that's why actually the uh, it's more, uh, it's more uh, better to define, uh, declare that this, uh, this one, uh, the one dimensional array, and then use the, this kind of the. You should know that uh, we are using that, that kind of convention when interpreting the matrix from here. And also, there are many other uh, matrix related uh, functions, but uh, we, we are not going to talk about here. But uh, if you're interested, you can actually the, always Google. Uh, also, you can see that this Google, uh, Google this. Uh, you can look at the OpenGL reference book. So uh, the animation, the animation demo that I should refer, it just uh, consists of redraw and swap. That's it. And uh, for animation, it's always better to provide uh, more than 30 frames per second. Yeah, uh, basically, yeah, it, it is nothing FPS. So if you play the game, you know that actually why we should have uh, the more than 30 FPS. Otherwise, it looks very slow, right? And then uh, it doesn't look like actually interactive application. Basically, we will look at the, the animation example based on the idle callback function. So here, when you click the mouse button at that uh, application, this function actually calls. This comes button, uh, but, uh, which button actually the call and of the state variable and some of the actually the mouse location, I guess. And then uh, here, the, uh, depending on the button uh, uh, operation, is the when uh, left button actually the left button is clicked. Uh, down uh, this button down click then we associate this spin display with the GL idle function once we actually call we actually once we set up this one it means that when we are idle it means that there's nothing uh, nothing else that we can do for the this uh, our this the application that we call this function spin idle so when when I actually when we don't uh, <coughs> there's no cycle no work that we need to do we call this function so then we keep call this function which is nothing but here. It, here actually is that because we are rotating, and we uh, here at spin is the amount of the rotation angle. We, uh, every time when, uh, every time this function is called, we adding two degree, and the spin is the more than sorry sixty. We actually initialize it again with the zero, and the GLUT post redisplay. It means that we creating event that uh, we should redisplay this. Uh, we should redisplay this the screen, and then. Uh, to respond that event with nothing but we just uh, calling this display function that I showed here before. Just uh, rotate, just uh, nothing but just uh, uh, drawing the rectangle shape, rotate with amount of spin, right? So that's why, uh, uh, let me create this first, first one. Uh, uh, value left button, we just keep adding the rotate, we increasing rotation angle. And then, uh, then we display. We just we uh, we put the uh, uh, we display event for actually for later on when we actually we have some time some cycle on the CPU side. We can call that display function and then we draw. And if we click the right button, then we set the GI the function nothing there. Then even though there's idle, we just idle. We let the CPU just idle. So not, no other function call. That way, uh, by clicking left one, we are rotating, and by clicking right one, nothing there. Let me uh, re-show this demo. Uh, and this one, I guess. And then we put screen. Then, if I click the left button, it's rotating. Uh, if I click the uh, right button, it stops. Left, right, something like that. OK, so uh, I, uh, the, I recommend you to the download, uh, just access to our homepage, and you can find the, the G file of the older demo. Then you, uh, I wish that you can, uh, you can actually download it, and you can actually play with that. And uh, so I hope that by now, you can actually write down some of simple 2D transformations and understand the why we introduce homogeneous coordinate and of each benefit. 
Also, I talked about some of OpenGL transformation related API. Also, there I showed that how we can implement some of the animation based on the, this idle, idle function. So, uh, basically, this is one of very simple format. There could be many other ways, but I just showed only one example here. And just regular homework, go over the next lecture slide before the class. Watch the two figure out, figure out Asia video. And some, some of your summary before the hour, not just the Monday class. You can submit the, the online. You can write down just one or two paragraphs in English and Korean. And uh, yeah, just come up with the, the question at least, uh, two times during this whole semester. Yeah. So next time I will talk about 3D, uh, 3D transform, uh, transformation. Uh, maintain your good health and see you later. Bye.